Hey there guys, welcome to the Crystal Crawford Show. I'm Crystal and uh, this week's topic, you being different inside your family doesn't make you wrong, has got me by the short and curlies. <laughs> um, I'd say I, I created this last night um, and hey to all of you guys that are joining me live. And I just, I just came off of a weekend with my family. Hi, Dorothy. Uh, for my little niece's, Zara's birthday. And my brother, who's her dad, lives about three hours away from me down in Seattle. And I don't go down there that often. Almost at all. Almost never. Hi, Yvonne. And um, so I just had a whole weekend, I mean, where the first day I went down, it was so different for me. Like, hi, Rosemary. Um, so different like I was I am always different every time I see them and you know my family has a really really long history of I well, maybe every family does I'm 42 so we have 42 years of history that I've been around but we have a really really long history of um, gosh a lot of abuse and a lot of sexual abuse and a lot of court time and a lot of you know splitting from each other because of sexual stuff and so so time with them for me has always been not the easiest thing. Now there's five of us siblings and um, I'm the oldest and that's been a part of my story for a really long time. Hi again Maxie. And, um, but I, I want to talk about, I want to take this in a direction that I, I really haven't taken a conversation about my family before and actually I want to start with by reading the description that I wrote because I, I read it again myself and I'm like that's really brilliant. So. It may not even be that our families make us feel wrong or bad for being different, or it may be just that. But regardless, as grown people, the triggers that seem to be left behind reveal things that we can actually change that go beyond the walls of just our family. Is it possible that your family is a catalyst to you choosing something greater? Is it possible that locked up in what seems like something with no purpose, are catalytic moments where you get to choose something greater than you've ever considered possible. Um, join me for tools and possibilities that no one else is talking about. One of the awarenesses that I had yesterday as I was, you know, heading back home from a weekend with everybody was um, that that I'm in, that I am incredibly different within my family. One of the things that's really, really different about me is um, I'm always, always looking for the things that come up. Um, I'm looking for to be able to change those things for me. So like over the weekend I had some stuff come up for me that felt like my sister was judging me as sexually dangerous for her son. Um, about seven years ago when she was pregnant with Jacob, I, um, my brother and I had an interaction that resulted in him saying to me some stuff that in my world triggered alarm bells and then ended up telling my sister about it. And she basically told my brother that he couldn't be around her newly born children. And then he told her some stuff about me that she decided that I couldn't be around her newly born children. And this time was the first time that I've actually met Jacob and he's seven, he's almost seven. And he was super excited to meet me and I was super excited to meet him. I didn't even know I was gonna get to meet him. But throughout the weekend, it just seemed to me that like she was watching me to make sure that I didn't hurt him. Now. To be fair, I've not had a conversation with her about this. I haven't even asked her if that's what was going on. Um, but it hit me in a way where I went into this deep dark hole of the rejection and the judgment of me. And then of course it has to be the rejection and the judgment of her. Because you can't, the only way you can reject and judge somebody else is if you're first doing it to yourself. So of course I sunk into this deep dark hole and then I proceeded to try to claw my way out of it and I called a friend and I got some facilitation. She doesn't actually know about any of that. Um, but so I started looking at this whole family thing from a different perspective of like, okay, so what if spending time with my family wasn't about spending time with my family per se? What if it was actually about, you know, every time I hang out with them, I get to become more aware. I get to actually change something about myself. I get to go back into time and destroy and uncreate any decisions or judgments that I made back in the day that are creating this struggle. I was like, you know, what if I actually looked at time with family in a different way? Hi, Tamara. Um, where it wasn't about the end result of really like enjoying each other, which disappoints me every single time personally. 
but it was more about the letting them and the time with them being a catalyst to creating more change in my world and creating more awareness of where I'm really functioning from. Um, I noticed that with this whole thing with my sister, it could seem really justified, my falling apart, and I did it in quiet and in silent, and she didn't know about it, but it could seem really justified that I fell apart over that, right? Like, whose sister does that? But when I really looked at it, like, one, it has nothing to do with me, actually. Even if it has something to do with me in her head, it has nothing to do with me. It has everything to do with her desire to keep her children safe and to try to control something that she actually can't control and is trying to control and can't control. Um, you know, and, and it triggered something for me that I decided about myself a long time ago. And I don't know how old I was when I decided that I must be dangerous and I must be unsafe. There was so much sexual trauma in my family. There was so much that was secret and hidden and covert and not seen and unacknowledged about sex and about bodies. So much so that I can't even articulate all of it. I just know that we grew up with this culture around sex and sexuality that was really taboo and really like just wasn't something you talked about. And then my dad sexually abused me, so I had to share that. You know, I did share that when I was 13. We went to court. Um, he was out of our lives because of that for, with all five of us. And um, so there was this whole other, whole other thing that got created in our lives around, you know, like not, uh, I don't even know, like having body limits. And like there was this whole other culture that got developed in our household around sex and sex and bodies. And so, so, this, so, so all of that galump of sexual stuff in our family like, has never really changed. <laughs> it's like we've each kind of gone off in our own direction with it, you know, like and had families and had children and I've gone off and had two divorces and done my thing and Bryce has done it his way and we've all kind of done it our own way. But it's never really changed. And I started looking over the weekend about like what did what did I come here to change? Because I've actually been the voice in the family that has broken things apart. Like, I was the voice in the family that shared the sexual abuse with Beth, my dad. I was the voice in the family that told my sister about my brother. Like, I've been the voice. And, um, and it's been funny because I've had the point of view that telling my sister about my brother backfired on me because now her eyes were on me too. Like, I participated in that. I instigated him and so he never would have said that thing if I hadn't participated, you know? And I've let that make me wrong instead of actually going, what is the difference I came here to create? What is the difference I am with bodies and sex and sexuality that I've never claimed owned or acknowledged? What's the different possibility that I'm aware of that does not fit into my family's paradigm of what should be? And, um, <laughs> and uh, so true, and I don't even pay them for helping me get more and more aware. I know, right? They, like, really, our family should be paid for the gift that they give us for being more and more aware. <laughs> okay, we gotta re we're gonna have to rethink this. I think my sister would be pleased about that. Um, so what's the gift of me that I'm not acknowledging, number one? That's really what I want to look at. Like, what decisions and judgments and conclusions did I create way back when? So there's so many things I want to tell you. So what decisions, judgments, computations, and conclusions did I create way back when that my interaction with them now is validating, right? So anytime you create a point of view, hi Torgan, hi Eva. Anytime you create a point of view, you have to create the proof for it. So anytime you make a decision, anytime you make a conclusion, anytime you judge something, you have to prove your point of view correct. Which means, anytime there's wonky energy between you and your family, there's some sort of like resisting and reacting, aligning and agreeing, proving going on to some point of view that somebody's butting up against, right? Only points of view can create this energy. That's it. Space and allowance and no point of view does not create that energy. So only points of view create this. So, so what point of view did I generate way back in the day that my sister watching me with her son, and tr truthfully, I don't even know exactly if that's what she was doing. It could have been a bunch of other things too, but let's just say it is. So what point of view did I create that this validated that I then had to reject myself for? And so I destroyed and uncreated that times a godzillion. I let that go. I was like, okay, so that whatever I decided about myself, then I'm going to let that go. And what would it be like to actually, with no point of view, what would it be like if her point of view or her where she's functioning had nothing to do with me, even if it did have something to do with me in her mind? 
What if it still had nothing to do with me? What gift could I actually be to her, to me, to her son, to to the family that that they will never acknowledge? Or maybe they will and I can't receive it yet. Right? They, they might never acknowledge it. They might acknowledge it and I've never been able to receive it because there's been a lot of no receiving in my family as well. But, but what can I actually choose to be that goes beyond the point of view that I'm busy resisting and reacting with them about? What's that that I've never even asked for? And so, so that, and then I, there's something else that just slipped out of my mind. Um, and then I guess too, like just what, oh, here's the other thing. So when, what I've constantly done with my family, and you might have been able to, you may have done this too, is, is always look from the point of view of like, well, I'm so different than them. I'm the black sheep. I do life different. I do marriage different. Wow, they're doing life really normal. I'm really not. You know, I've used my family as a reference point to judge myself with. And so what if I didn't? Right, and, and I've blamed that on them for the most part. I've, I've blamed all of that on them. Like, they are the ones judging me. They're the ones that think I'm different. They're the one, and, and that actually hasn't allowed me to acknowledge what's actually going on, which is that I'm using them as a way to judge me and reject me and, you know, throw me under the bus because I'm so different. So I've used my difference as a way to separate, judge, and reject. So everything that is, could you just, could we let that go? Times a godzillion. Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pot, online, shirts, was meons. Um, and if you don't know the crazy clearing statement, go to the clearingstatement.com. Um, what would be possible if nothing about the way they functioned had anything to do with anything except it was just the way they functioned? Number one. And number two, what if there is more similarity there. What if I stopped looking for the differences and the reasons to reject and separate and I started looking for the energies that are similar? And I remember Gary had this conversation with us around him and Dane. He it was a creative edge call and he was talking about difference versus similarity and how we keep looking for our difference to try to individuate, to try to be ourselves, to try to do all this stuff that doesn't require looking for our difference. And there's this funny thing of where you acknowledge how different you are. I acknowledge that I am all about awareness when I can be. <laughs> when I'm not busy resisting and aware, reacting, right? Like my next step after I resist and react, after I dump myself under the bus, is going to be to choose awareness. And so that is my MO. I am all about looking for how what what is instead of like the fantasy of it. Like I want to know what it is. That's my general impetus, right? That is very different from what my family's choosing. It's sort of. It's very different from my point of view, right? Like it's like a lot of them are choosing like to create normal lives, to create lives that don't stick out that much, to create lives that have a stability to them because ours didn't, to create lives that to them make sense. I have never been about that. I've been about creating my life in a way that works for me and, and then works for me. And then when I stop creating it in a way that works for me, I go back to creating it in a way that works for me. Like I've been about something different for my whole life. So there is that. That's acknowledging my difference. I'm totally different that way. And it doesn't make me wrong. And it also doesn't make them wrong that they are about what they are about. And what if instead of looking for the difference to judge, reject, and separate, I start looking for what's similar? What do we energetically all desire? Energetically, all of us desire to like each other. Really. Energetically, we all desire to like get along. Energetically, we all desire to like in some way, shape, or fashion make sure that my mother has a roof over her head. We all have our different ideas about how it should be done, but that's something we all have you know, that's a similarity. And what if instead of trying to make it into something that it just isn't, I can appreciate them for exactly what they are and I can appreciate me for exactly what I am and just keep choosing to show up. And I noticed that in my world, that takes a level of vulnerability that I haven't been willing to be with them. It's been a lot easier to just judge and separate because because it doesn't require much courage to do that, you know? And, it, and that's not me making myself wrong. It's just, it's been what I've needed to do to get here. But what else is possible? Like, what, what gift am I to the planet, 
to people, to possibility that if I didn't just judge and reject and separate would actually give my family access to a different possibility. Now, sometimes this is not a possibility. Sometimes with your family, like there's abuse and you need to change it and just leave. I'm not saying this is always the case. I'm just inviting all of us to really flip our points of view about our family on its head and really go, okay, so I've decided that it is this way. I've decided that it can't change. I've decided um, that blah, 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 I've decided. Just look at what you've decided and pock and pod that, like destroying and create anything you've decided because anything you've decided means something different can't show up. Anything you've decided means you have to prove your points of view, which means your stuff with your family is never gonna change because you're not changing your points of view. And as soon as you're willing to change your points of view, that is what opens up the different possibility with your family. And that is the difference that you be. That right there, that you're willing to look at your points of view that's how different you are. And that's the gift of your difference inside your family. And I don't mean inside from a point of view of like you're encircled by your family and you can't escape and blah, all of everything that is. Can we destroy it and create all that? Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pock, online, shorts, boys and beyonds. I mean, that is the difference you be. That's that one mustard seed of difference, all that's required to change an entire batch. That one drop of food coloring that's all that's required to change the entire color of the mix. And I realized this weekend, like, that's, that's what I haven't been willing to be because I've been so busy being engaged in the judgment and the separation and the rejection of me and them. And that has kept me busy. And so I'm literally just with all of my being asking, what else is possible? Like, what courage am I? What vulnerability am I already that I can now bring to this mix that has nothing to do with anybody's points of view? And listen, you know, one of the awarenesses that I had this morning when I was, I, I came back home from the weekend, you know, I, I was with or around them or in that energy for the weekend. And then I came back home and I woke up this morning and I was so different. I was so much space and I was so happy and I was like, so me. And I realized, holy fuck, like I wasn't this over the weekend. Right? Like I was something else. I was like upset and going through stuff and I was aware of so much judgment and like, and it really illustrated to me really dynamically how we talk about all the time how 99% of your thoughts, feelings, and emotions aren't yours, right? Like I was like, holy fuck, like as soon as you go to being into the mountains and around more space and the pool and my house and these people that are a lot of space, all of that judgment that I thought was mine that was like cascading through my world went away. And then as soon as I'm around these other people, this is everything it feels like mine, right? And I was like, so if we start out in the world as these aware little beings in our families, and we don't have the information that 99% of everything that's going on in our system isn't ours, right? We don't have that information. We just buy it as ours. We just buy this reality is real and at some point we decide that the, the rejection we're aware of means we're rejected and the judgment we're aware of means we're judged and so we decide things based on that we go through the rest of our ever loving lives with our family proving those points of view proving that I'm rejected proving that I'm not meanwhile my family's trying to show me something different you know and they're they are in ways also while being weird over here too right like it's all of it but it's not one or the other it's all of it. And I've only been willing to see what my points of view were. And so what points of view are you using to create the family trauma and drama are you choosing? And everything that is, will you destroy and create all that? Right, wrong, good, bad, pop, pop, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. Now listen, this, is, this conversation is not about trying to go see the good in your family when all you can see is bad. That's not what I'm talking about. I am talking about being willing to be aware of everything with no point of view. All of it. All of it. Because it's all there. The caring, the abuse, the judgment, the rejection, the separation. Like it's all there in one big family soup. And you as a little being have brought forward all of your projections and expectations and judgments and rejections that you bought as real. Because who else was telling you that they weren't real? You're aware of them. They're in your space. They're, they're intense and dynamic and solid and they hurt. And it's, it hurts. And so, of course, your reality hurts, right? Like you're around your family. Like these people don't like me. These people don't, 
And when, when what's actually going on is that you're so psychic and you be different, you be aware, you are this other being thrust into this situation that you're supposed to know what to do with. And then here we are as grown-up people trying to make all this work, right? What else is possible? What gift are you? <laughs> what gift are you? What gift am I? What gift are you? What gift are you? What gift did you come here to be? What limitations did you come here to shatter? What limitations did you come here to shatter? What are you denying with the rejection that you're choosing? It's like when you choose to reject yourself because you make somebody else's judgments more real than you, then you've negated and denied and totally destroyed the gift that you can be to that. And the gift that you can be with a no point of view. And listen, this no point of view shit is a new muscle. And you're going to hear me talk about that probably for the rest of my life. Like it is not a muscle that we're trained in. It's a new muscle. And and it may require, you know, you go be around your family who triggers all your shit and you go and you get a session, right? It may be that you get around your family, they trigger all your shit and you go and you talk to a friend that really has your back and you get through it to the other side, right? It may be that that's the gift your family is to you. That may be the gift, right? <laughs> one of the gifts. What is the gift of your family to you? What catalytic choice did you make by having them in your life? Like what choice did you make by having them in your life? What are they gifting to you that you're not acknowledging? And what gift are you with the, cho with the change you're willing to choose with everything that's going on with them? Like I get that on the other side of this big hump that I'm looking at now, like with facing, being willing to face that maybe I am dangerous. Maybe I am, maybe I'm just not willing to be that. I've never been willing to claim on and acknowledge that of course I have that capacity. Of course I have the capacity to hurt children. Would I ever use it? No. That's not a choice that I would make. But I have that. Why would I resist that when I can have every single capacity available to me? Why would I resist that when resisting it sticks it in place? Resisting it means that I can't actually look at what's possible. Resisting it means that I can't actually be with all of my potency and then choose the reality I want to create. Resisting it means I don't have choice. So for what reason would I resist that anymore? What if I could just be it? And that's fucking crazy sounding to this reality that nobody talks about that. Why would you choose to be that? Because if you're resisting it, you can't acknowledge that you have the capacity to choose. And I do have the capacity to choose. And I am choosing to create the reality I want to see and that is not a part of it. And that is a claiming, owning, and acknowledging of my potency, my presence, my capacities that have nothing to do with my sister and nothing to do with anything my family's bought or perpetrated, but something I may not have had the access to without them. So I want to thank them and I want to thank me for choosing this family, for choosing the situation in which I could start to look at and be all of me and choose to create the reality I want to create. The reality I want to create is where children are not sexually abused. The reality I want to create is where children are safe. To be them. They're empowered to be them. They're empowered to know what they know. The reality I want to create is a reality where children have every empowerment to their own awareness. Where they're told, hey, did you know you're psychic? Did you know you pick up on shit everywhere? Did you know that all that stuff you're aware of isn't even yours? That's the reality I'm creating. And nobody else has to know that but me. I happen to be stating it on, you know, national television. But nobody has to get that but me. I'm the only one that needs to know that. I'm the only one that needs to claim on and acknowledge that. I don't need anybody else to validate that for me. And so do we choose these things as they are breadcrumbs, as they are breadcrumbs that we leave ourselves to show us the way? Yeah, do we? I wonder. I wonder. So I guess today I just want to leave you with like, um, what's the gift of your family that you've never looked at? What's the gift of you that you've never looked at? And if you weren't busy like separating and judging and rejecting you, 
or them? What choices would you have available to you? If being around your family could be a catalytic event for you, instead of something that you keep hoping will go a certain way and keep the, and, and it keeps not going there, right? Like if, if we weren't functioning from the utopian ideal of family, of like, gosh, I just keep, oh, every time I go see my family, it's a disaster. I just wish it would change, right? I just hope that it's different next time. That's utopian ideal reality. What about what is reality of, okay, so this is what is about my sister. This is what is about my brother. This is what is about my other brother. This is what is about my mom. This is what is about me. Okay, so what can we all generate and create together? What can I be that would change things? What change can I bring into the mix that doesn't have anything to do with resisting or reacting? What change am I just by being? And if I wasn't rejecting anything about me, if I wasn't throwing anything about me under the bus, what would be possible here? And just being that question, being those questions as you're with your family, being those questions as you, you know, go into family events or family holidays or whatever. Um, what's beyond the separation, the judgment, and the rejection of us and our family? What's beyond it? What reality is beyond it? And what can we now claim and own and acknowledge about ourselves that is the difference we be? That would empower us to create a totally different reality. So I think that's it for today, I adore you. If if you liked this, share it. And if you'd like to come play on my 30 days of eliminating rejection, we're really diving deep and changing all this stuff. And I'm going to leave it open for two more days. So share this, like it, love you. And I'll see you guys next week.